like just about everyone's in from the waiting room. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Bill Leonard. And for those of you who are joining us again, welcome back. For those of you who's, who this is the first time you're tuning into a coffee series, um, welcome. Um, again, I'm the Director of Enrollment Management at Bergen Catholic, a graduate of the class of 2010. Um, and tonight, the, ser the speaker series will be led by our principal, Mr. Tim McLenny, who is going into his 14th year as principal of Bergen Catholic. So his first year as principal was also my first year as a student at Bergen Catholic. So um, that was 14 years ago for me, making me feel a bit old. But um, he's been an incredibly successful principal. Um, he has a lot of, he's a great resource. And for all of the incoming uh, parents, this will be a great opportunity to hear a little more about the Bergen Catholic academic experience and what sets us apart from some of our competitors. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Tim McElhinney. Well, uh, thank you, Bill, and, and um, let me just respond. Uh, Bill's one of the finest students to come through Bergen Catholic uh, in the past 14 years, and his brother Kevin uh, equally is good. The, the Leonard family is a committed Bergen Catholic family. Uh, Bill's dad, Bill Sr., is also a graduate of Bergen Catholic. Um, so uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for uh, taking some time out of your evening uh, to have some coffee uh, with me. Um, you know, my hope is that I could share some information uh, and that uh, you leave this with a, a little better sense of Bergen Catholic than when you started the meeting. Uh, so let me just start with, with, uh, with me. Um, the reason I am frozen here. Forgive me. Mr. Spiegel, uh, I am unable to move my screen. Um, there you go. I have there it is. That. Uh, so I, I think it's important for uh, for people to know who the principal is. And I, I think you need to have a sense of who I am. Uh, you know, most importantly, um, uh, my wife, uh, Tracy, and I are the parents of, of five kids, three boys, two girls. Uh, we have a, a range of ages. Uh, our oldest is, is graduating high school this year. Uh, we live in Queens, so I am nowhere near Bergen Catholic. So my boys are unable to go uh, to uh, to Bergen. Uh, they would be in a, in a very long and, and difficult commute. Uh, but uh, we, we're excited uh, to, to be the parents of these five kids, and uh, we are tired all the time as a result. Uh, I went to high school in Brooklyn, a school called Poly Prep, which is right underneath the uh, Verrazano Bridge on the, on the Brooklyn side. Uh, went to Mueller College in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, have a history degree from there, and also went through the teacher education program, which means I student taught. I have a master's degree from Long Island University. Um, I have a, a certificate in online teaching, uh, which I thought was important to get. I got, uh, I received that certificate about four years ago, and it has helped as we have transitioned, as you can imagine, uh, to the virtual learning format that we are all in uh, right now. And currently, I'm in a, an education specialist degree program at Seton Hall. So my wife is just thrilled that I keep going to school uh, and trying to spend as much of our money on my tuition and not on my children. Um, my experience, I began my career at St. Anne School, which is an independent school, private school in downtown Brooklyn in the Brooklyn Heights section. Um, and I spent eight years there. I then moved to a boarding school, Oakwood Friends School in Poughkeepsie, New York, and spent seven years. And I have been very lucky to, have, uh, to be the principal of Bergen Catholic High School for the past 14 years. So uh, a little bit about me, and, and, I, and I do think it's important that you know us more than just by name, but some of our background. So getting into, uh, you know, tonight, now I know we have a mixture of people watching, some which are ninth grade rising parents or eighth grade rising parents to be ninth graders so that your kids will be here next year. We have some people on, on the call that are just uh, taking their first look at Bergen Catholic. So I hope I'm able to, to, uh, to hit both uh, viewing groups with some information. So our graduation requirement at Bergen Catholic is 140 credits. And now that means four year requirements in math, English and religion, three year, three year requirements in lab science, uh, social studies and world languages. Now in each of those three year areas, we do have a fourth year of the sequence. So kids can progress on. If they choose not to stay within those department areas, uh, we have elective courses that they could take and they would certainly enjoy uh, doing that. We round out the 140 credits with what we call our common period courses, which are art, computer science, health, physical education. So that gets us to 140. Now, the public schools in New Jersey, it's 120. It doesn't mean that kids in public schools in New Jersey can't take 140 credits. They can. 
But at Bergen Catholic, you must, otherwise you cannot receive a diploma. Uh, so that's the difference between uh, the, the two school types. And we are excited about the program that we're able to offer, and we do think it's the appropriate way uh, to do this in this day and age. Uh, so looking at course placement, now this is directed more towards the incoming group, but I think it's valuable for the seventh and eighth grade parents who are watching. The way we decide our course placement, meaning whether they're gonna be in college preparatory courses, honors courses, or high honors courses, which I'll show you only exist within our math sequencing, uh, we use your HSPT scores, so your son's placement scores or co-op, I know there's some confusion there at times, but it's the entrance test and we take their total composite score. That's kind of their total score on the test. But then we dive into the sub scores. Uh, your son spent a lot of time on that test and we want to value their, their experience with it. So we do try to pull out as much information as we can. We rely on the transcript though significantly. How has the young man performed in class with a teacher, you know, day to day, sixth, seventh and eighth grade, and we really value uh, that experience and that information. For kids that want to challenge their placement, so they're not placed in an honors course after we review the total composite, the sub scores on the HSPT and their transcript, kids have a chance to show us that we were wrong and they can take a placement test. Now, right now we're in a unique situation because we're in a virtual format. So we're working out how to do that for the incoming group. Typically we would just bring you in on a Saturday and if you'd like to take a test, for instance, in, in algebra or geometry, we sit you down and have you take the test. So right now we're in a different scenario. We use te testing software with our students that doesn't necessarily allow us to use it for anybody who we want to just test. So we're trying to figure out the best way to do that. And we'll have an answer, you know, within a week or so time to make sure that all the incoming kids know how to do this and uh, we could use that score as well. So that's the way, that's, those are the criteria or information points that we use to make our best decision on placement. And we try to get that right so kids aren't jumping all around. Now here's what a freshman program would look like. And I wanna start by saying college preparatory is an excellent pathway of courses. Our teachers prepare well. They prepare hard because these kids challenge them in those classrooms. There is no difference in preparation time or expectation with the teachers, whether they're teaching college preparatory, honors, or AP courses. They give the same effort and the expectations are the same, which is the young man needs to try the best he can and live up to expectations of doing a little more than what he thinks he can do. So the other part about this is we're not a school that is all in one or the other meaning you're all in college preparatory or all in honors. We mix and match to the skills and talents of the young man. So you might be in two honors courses and the rest CP or flip flop that the other, uh, the other way. We wanna make sure we're putting the kid in the best position possible for him to have success. But take out the honors and the CP designations for a moment and you'll see that every student takes eight classes. Now, not all eight classes meet every day, but they'll take math, English, uh, biology, science, world language, I'll come back to that, world history, religion, and then in the common period, which is a term we use uh, at Bergen Catholic, they'll take one semester of art, one semester of engineering, and they'll have a full year of PE. And that's how you get the eight courses. Now those art engineering PE courses don't meet every day or six out of the seven days, they meet less, which is why we call it the common period. But when you look at the listing, please recognize that students at Bergen Catholic are enrolled in eight classes for their semester, okay? And that's the way we look at it. Now we do offer our, for our world language offerings, Latin, Mandarin, and Spanish. Um, and we have good numbers in all of those. Spanish is the biggest, it's the biggest, really in most, most all high schools, but we have excellent numbers in Latin and Mandarin, uh, and kids have a great opportunity to run through that sequence. All three of those end with an AP course if they would like. If we look at the math and science sequences, and I know for those that have come to an open house, you've heard this before, uh, but it is the number one question I get in terms of sequence, how do you move a kid from the eighth grade into the ninth grade? And it really is us valuing the eighth grade math experience that your son either is having or will have. So for instance, if he is in pre-algebra right now as an eighth grader, he will come into Bergen Catholic and take algebra one, then geometry, 
then algebra two, and then as a senior, he'll be in some level of pre-calculus. If he is right now taking algebra one, he will come into Bergen Catholic as a freshman and take some level of geometry, followed by algebra two, followed by pre-calculus, and then some level of calculus. Now this is the only department, the mathematics department, that we break our grouping up to one more group, high honors. And we do that because of the terminal course of AP Calculus BC. That is a unique group of kids. And we try to cohort them together from the freshman year through. That, so this is the only department in which we have a high honors designation, okay? But again, any one of these pathways is an excellent pathway. Now our lab sciences, we go in the, in the order of biology, chemistry, and physics. We offer currently AP chemistry and AP biology. However, starting next year, we have added in AP environmental science as another option in the senior year. Now, if you are a math kid or you're the parent of a math, uh, forgive me, of a science uh, centric kid, uh, he will take five lab sciences before he graduates. So assume that he's going to take biology, chemistry, and physics. He will potentially take two other AP sciences, which would be either AP biology, AP chemistry, or AP environmental science. Uh, no one gets out of Bergen Catholic without taking physics. So even if a kid would like to take AP bio in the junior year, which is absolutely a possibility, he will still have to take physics in the senior year. We think physics has great value with, on everyone, but particularly on young men that would like to follow science into uh, a major in the college years. Uh, Mr. McLean, we have one question in the chat about um, high honor. So the question was, does high honors continue all the way through? It does. Now, now thank you for, for that question. Uh, I was going to address it at the end, but let me address it now. We evaluate every student every year at the end of the year to make sure they are still appropriately placed. So there will be some movement from CP to honors to high honors. All right, so, so depending on how the student is performing year over year over year, yes, it is, it is a possibility, a real possibility, that the student, if he's in high honors as a freshman, will finish in high honors as a senior, which means that he's taking AP Calculus BC. If you're in the honors pathway coming in with geometry, your senior year course, or the student's senior year course, would be AP Calculus AB. Okay, so there's two Calc AP courses. So the honors is directed towards the AB, and the high honors is directed towards the BC. But we do have movement back and forth. If you're the parent of a young man who is currently in pre-algebra, we can't skip algebra. I, I get that question a lot. Can he just take a placement test and come in and take geometry as a freshman? No, we, we can't do that. He has to take the course. So at some point, depending on how he's doing, if he's performing very well, we, will, we can have a conversation about him taking a course over the summer that would progress his sequence so that he could take some level of calculus as a senior. But believe me, pre-calculus is an excellent course as well. Is it all right to move on, Bill? Yes. Now, looking at the humanities side of the building, uh, we can never leave that area you know, out of a conversation. Um, we have, as the freshman year, looking at English, Intro to Literature, it's really a survey course. Uh, intro to Literature, we then follow that in the sophomore year with American Lit, British Lit in the junior year, and then World Lit in the senior year. Humanities covers a little bit more, obviously, if you're in the honors, uh, a little more uh, topics and a little more breadth and depth, if you would. I know it's a term that's used often. Um, so Intro to Lit, American Lit, British Lit, and then World Lit is the sequence at Bergen Catholic. On the social uh, studies side, it's world history as a freshman, U.S. history one sophomore, U.S. history two junior year, and then we have electives that fill out that fourth year. You can take, if your son is, is qualifies in terms of grade and placement test, we do have AP European in the sophomore year. Uh, so that's our very first opportunity for an AP course for a young man at Bergen Catholic, and it falls within the social studies sequence. Okay, here are our 17 AP course offerings. And as I just mentioned, uh, we have uh, the earliest opportunity would be in the sophomore year. 
Uh, we have a number, and these are traditionally placed. So for instance, we'll have seniors take AP Bio. Uh, we'll have seniors take AP Computer Science. You know, when you get up to that, that age range, there's a possibility to kind of, you know, you know, make your schedule as you would like it. Uh, but traditionally, these are where they fall. Um, and these are 17 courses. The two bolded courses are the new ones for next year, environmental science and psychology. So they are being offered for the first time in the 2020-21 school year. And I do want to note that economics, even though it is listed as one course, the kids sit for two exams, the micro and the, mic and the macro exam. Uh, so that is uh, 18 tests within 17 courses. Um, we try to cover, uh, you know, the range uh, of offerings. The AP College Board offers 32. We don't think it's appropriate for us to offer 32. We feel very good at 17, and we feel good about bringing in the environmental science and psychology. Uh, these are areas that kids were looking uh, to have some AP opportunities uh, within. Okay. It's a little early for freshmen to think about that or seventh grade parents, but nonetheless, you know, if kids, we want to push. And if this is where they land, that's terrific. But we also want you to know that we have 24 dual enrollment courses. So courses that earn the student. Now, these are classes that are taught at Bergen Catholic by Bergen Catholic teachers. But it satisf satisfies both the high school requirement and functionally a freshman year requirement in the college level. So we have 24 of these courses. We partner with Iona College, Seton Hall University, and the University of Delaware. Now here's the value of this. Now I will share within those 24, six of those courses are AP courses. So you may say, why would I do that? And you have a good point. All right, but we want to give kids the opportunity to potentially kind of target Iona or target Seton Hall or target Delaware if they would like for the college experience. Uh, but what this means, dual enrollment courses, is just by going through our sequence. Literally just by progressing through the sequence, students at Bergen Catholic will have an opportunity to take a course that will earn credit at the college level. Now at Seton Hall, for instance, the per credit course cost is you know somewhere around thirteen hundred dollars. You know, it's usually around a hundred dollars for the high school program. Okay, so I'm not saying you can complete your college career as a as a senior, but you can make some headway there. Um, and do it at a much uh, a savings of what it would be at the at the college uh, tuition rate. But we're really excited about this because it doesn't mean anything other than you going through our sequence that you'll be able to take a college level course. Now I can't promise where those tra where those credits will transfer. Um, many colleges take them. Uh, certainly, I own a Seton Hall and University of Delaware. Uh, but but regardless, putting that on your profile when you apply to college. Is definitely a leg up. Okay, so between the 17 and the 24, or the 17 and the 18, because six of these are AP courses, I don't want to double dip. We have 35 opportunities to take college level courses at Bergen Catholic. I think that's an exciting opportunity. Um, now, this is uh, for, you know, well, I guess it's for everybody, but certainly for the group that's coming in. You know, how do we make sure you're aware of how your son's doing? So we have, uh, we have a, as our learning management system, uh, Blackboard. And on there is our, you know, you can find your son's grades at, at any time. Now, listen, there is a, a lag of, of grading. You know, if something is, is due at, you know, two o'clock, it's not going to be graded by three o'clock. So there's a little bit of that. But you have real time grading uh, that you could follow your son through each of his courses. Uh, so that's day to day as much as you would like to be on. We, uh, okay, the other part about this is we don't view Blackboard as a communication tool. So it's a number, it's a, a numerical grade, but it doesn't tell the story. So we do ask teachers to reach out to parents if there's a concern. We also ask them to reach out to parents if the student's doing remarkably well, because we want them to know that as well. All right, so it's not just, you know, parents should log on, if it's a 72, they should be emailing us. That's not the way we approach it. The 72 means nothing necessarily, and we have to put it in context. Maybe this was the most difficult topic we've covered in the year, and his 72 was a great effort for him. Okay, so we want to be able to provide context. This isn't every day, but we certainly want to be able to say this is what the grade means. Now, formally, we, re we produce grade reports at the mid-quarter, which is what we call the progress report. So we produce four of those a year at the halfway point of each of our four quarters. 
We then provide a report card at the end of each quarter, okay? At the end of the first quarter, at the end of the first semester, the end of the third quarter, the end of the, of the, of the second semester. We have back to school nights. We have two parent-teacher conferences uh, a year, formal, yet we have informal ones uh, as need be with parents uh, and we arrange for those. So we wanna make sure you're aware of how your son's doing. Here's how we calculate. This isn't, you know, you know, you know high-end uh, uh, calculus. Uh, our, for all our quarters are worth 20%, uh, uh, and our midterm exam and final exams are worth 10% uh, each. So that gets you to 100%. We do give fall semester grades, uh, and then we have, we have the second semester where we add everything together. You'll get a semester grade and a year-end grade. Uh, you guys, your kids will not be taking electives yet, so I don't need to get into what does a, a semester elective grading um, calculation look like. You know, that's, that's four years down the road, uh, but this is how we factor out our grades. Uh, now, listen, we're, we're in a little different scenario right now with our remote learning, virtual learning format, so we adjusted, um, and we've given a little bit more weight to the third and fourth quarter, and we have taken away the final exams for this year and this year only. Uh, so at times we need to adjust, but this calculation is how we do it, um, uh, you know, for, you know, the better part of my career at Bergen Catholic, other than, you know, something, some disaster or issues such as the pandemic. Sandy was another year in which we altered our grading calculations. Weights. Now, everybody you know, likes to talk about how we calculate it. So we really want kids to try. And, and we don't want kids to think, oh, my gosh, I shouldn't take an honors course or an AP course. Because what if I get an 80? You know, what if I get a 70? Now, we, we catch the students by giving weight or applying weight to honors and AP courses. So if you take a look at what I have on the screen, a CP course, college preparatory course, is the value of one. An honors course is the value of 1.1. And an AP course is the value of 1.15. So with simple math, if you just take a – Let's just say in this situation, a student scored a 90. So a CP class, his weighted grade would be a 90. It's a 90 and a 90. If he's in an honors class, the 1.1 value would bring that weighted grade up to a 99. And if he's in an AP course, that value would go up to 103.5. We only apply the weight at the end of the year. We only apply the weight at the end of the year. So a young man will get a simple GPA and a weighted GPA. On his transcript, he will get a simple GPA and a weighted GPA, okay? And this hopefully prompts kids to take that chance, to take the higher level courses and understand that we'll catch them with the weight if they need it. Um, one of them will do well anyway, and the weight obviously just helps them more and more, okay? But we hope students and parents can see the value in that. Uh, I am wrapping it up. I have just two more slides. Uh, we use the computer uh, in, in really exciting ways. We use uh, two, iPad mini and, and a MacBook. Um, we use the MacBook for content creation, so papers and, and, and uh, uh, virtual labs and animation, um, you know, note-taking, you know, as simple as that, but really exciting stuff. We use the iPad mini uh, for content delivery. All of our uh, textbooks are, are digital. Uh, we take all, most of our exams, if not all of them, but most of our exams uh, through ExamSoft, which is used on the iPad as well. Um, and we, we try to make the, the learning process as exciting as we can and the computers help us with that. Um, now the last part is how do you partner with, with us? Because it is a partnership. Um, and we do want to, to hear from you and, 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 and speak with you. There are some you know, best practices though. And I know particularly if you're coming from a small Catholic school, usually the principal can answer every question. I, I am so impressed with Catholic elementary school principals. I could never do their, their job. It's really remarkable. But, but if you call me in September for a bio homework grade, I, I can't answer it. So, so we really try to go teacher, guidance, counsel, department chair to see that you can make sure you can get your answer. 99% of the time by going to the teacher, you absolutely get your, get your response. If you have some concerns about your, your, your child's overall academic performance or some social issues that they may be going through that happens from 14 to 18 years of age, the guidance counselor is the appropriate person to ask. And then with college, we have a college counselor, a college counseling office, and that's where those questions will be directed. Uh, now, college counseling, if you were on that one, I'm not sure if it's already happened, Bill, or it's still coming. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, that, that begins in the freshman year. That's not junior year stuff. That's freshman year. We begin with the college process. You know, so 
you know, we want to make sure that everybody's in the know and uh, as we're working towards that opportunity four years down the line. Okay, so uh, those are my slides. Those are my uh, points, and I could take any questions that you might have. Okay. I have a question uh, from the chat. So it, the question was, my son doesn't play any sports. Um, how will he fit in at Burton Catholic? Yeah, and, and, and he would not be alone. Uh, we have uh, about 75% of our students do play a sport, uh, but 100%, well, uh, I, I would put it at probably 80% of our kids are in clubs and activities. So we have more than 40 clubs or activities. In our schedule, we run a bell schedule every Tuesday or Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday, that provides a 30-minute activity period, which presents this opportunity for clubs and activities to meet. And freshmen have to do that. Now we have some other things that go beyond that. So the jazz ensemble, the vocal ensemble, the, the mock trial team, the yearbook, the newspaper. Uh, we have a bunch of activities that require more time. Uh, so we give uh, an opportunity in, in many, many areas for kids to be involved with. If your son does not play sports, he'll absolutely have some things to do at Bergen Catholic. A lot of things to do. I, I would add to that that uh, the most popular student in the school last year, the student government president, um, his name was Deglin DeMuro, and if you've been around Burton Catholic, I'm sure you've heard from him uh, speaking or helping with in admissions. Um, he didn't play any sports. He probably doesn't know the basic rules of football, um, and he did everything else you could at Burton Catholic, um, and he always says that there's so much to get involved in. Um, but he, even though he's not an athlete and he's not really into sports, he does love supporting Burton Catholic athletics. Um, so if you ever want to get a perspective on how you can be wildly successful as a Burton Catholic student and not play any sports, he would be happy to talk to you. Another question in the chat we have, is there a college counselor as well as a guidance counselor? So can you just talk about the difference? So, so the answer is yes. So your, your son will have a guidance counselor that he will stay with for four years. And that's great because they'll get to know each other. Uh, they'll understand each other. Um, the, the, col the guidance counselor will actually write the college recommendation. And that's because they have spent at that point three years together and he or she would know your son the best. So we think that's the right way of doing that. Your son will also be assigned a college counselor separate from his guidance counselor who will guide the, the entire family through the college process. Now at times the college counselor may write the recommendation as well, but uh, we really find that the, uh, the strength of that relationship between guidance counselor and student to really show benefits in the writing of the counselor recommendation um, into the senior year. Uh, but so to answer your question, one guidance counselor and then a separate college guidance counselor. Another question from the chat. How would you describe the general teaching style of the teachers during in-person instruction? Is it more traditional teacher directed or more group uh, slash student directed? I, I think it, 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 it's the latter. Uh, and I know it's the latter. There will be some element of lecture and, and most teachers instructional strategy bag, uh, but more often than not, you're gonna find kids engaged in activities. Uh, the technology we use prompts us to go in that direction. And quite honestly, with the last three months of virtual activities we've been engaging in, this is gonna prove really beneficial for all of us when we get back to in-seat, in-person, classroom-based instruction. But the computers and, and the culture of our teaching uh, really would prompt us to use more activity-based uh, instructional strategies than lecture. But every teacher is going to lecture at some point, but we try to limit that. Another one. How does the school plan to handle incoming students with regard to any deficiencies that may have arisen during the homeschooling? That's a good question. Um, and what we try to do in the freshman year uh, is we try to have a lesson back into, if you want, what would be considered an eighth grade topic. So take, for instance, Algebra 1. We would take a topic that would traditionally be at the end of the pre-algebra curriculum and try to measure where the kids are and then bring them forward. We do that in English, science, world language, all of those, and bring them forward. If there are specific deficiencies or gaps, we have uh, a student success center, which works with students um, to uh, either work on study skills and, and way to look at material 
uh, by chunking it and scaffolding it so they might be a little bit easier for them to go through it or work with learning differences that may be identified. Um, I can't tell you where the, where the group's going to be yet. Just solely being in a virtual environment doesn't mean they're going to be lacking when they come to us. Really, that first couple weeks of time with our teachers, we're going to be able to figure out where we have to begin. If there's more dramatic issues, then we will move them to the Student Success Center to try to develop a plan to help them. But again, we don't want to look at the virtual environment as solely to be less than uh, the in-person classroom base. I'll share with you. Yeah, we all want to be in the classroom. It is the best way to instruct. But a lot of schools are doing some excellent work. And we'll check it out when we get in there with the kids in the, in the September month. Is there a pre prerequisite or placement test for the languages? For, so for world languages. So, so for, for the, if you haven't been placed in honors, you would have to take a placement test. We do utilize some of the transcript uh, of the young man coming in. We actually pull some of the HSPT subscores to help us with placement. So if your son was not placed in honors, um, then we would, we would ask you to sit for the test. It's unlikely, for instance, uh, for someone to be placed in Spanish one honors if they've never taken Spanish before. Now, if you're a natural a native born speaker, we're in a different conversation. But if, for, for instance, if your son takes French at the moment uh, and going into Latin uh, or going into Spanish, he would not be at an honors level. I will share with you, I know this is gonna be somewhat confusing, we only have honors level Mandarin and Latin. While the numbers are strong, what I mean by that is more than 60 students in each program, we don't have enough students to break out between honors and CP. So if you do take Mandarin, which is Chinese or Latin, your designation will be honors. With Spanish, the bulk of our kids take Spanish, there is a designation between honors and CP. Okay, question from the chat. What are the discipline procedures? Well, we, we have expectations uh, and we spell them out in our family handbook. We also reinforce them, particularly in the freshman year of what we think a young man should do as a Bergen Catholic student, which is do the right thing even if no one is watching. Um, so we do have a code, we do have an expectation. And listen, kids are going to make mistakes, but the, in the real world, there are consequences. So there will be something assigned to that mistake to help the young man understand the next time he's presented with the same situation, how maybe to think differently. Our dean is, is a very good man. He talks to kids. So it's not just hand the detention to, to the young man and walk away. It's a conversation about how did we get here, what happened, and how can we do better. But we follow a detention system. If you earn enough detentions, you'll be put on probation. If you get too much in terms of probation, you know, you could be suspended. There are also moments where acts, if they are so egregious, it could lead to suspension or expulsion. We don't like to be there, um, but we try to make it known to our kids and to our families exactly what our expe expectations are. And those would be in the family handbook, which we provide before the school year begins. And actually, you have to review. It's required that you review it and inform us that you have through your signature. Thank you. Um... Another question from the chat. Can you talk a little bit about the electives available? So, and perhaps some examples of electives offered. Right. So this wouldn't happen to the senior year. Uh, electives are only uh, an option for the seniors because of the course of study with 140 credits and four year requirements and three year requirements. So we have um, uh, sports journalism. We have business law. We have earth science. Uh, we have economics, even though we have economics uh, at the AP level. Um, we have uh, computer animated design. Um, I'm sorry that I just, we have statistics. Uh, we, we have about 20 electives that kids can choose uh, from to balance out that senior year schedule. But in terms of the freshman, sophomore, and junior year, there are no opportunities for choices for electives that would occur in the senior year. Now, by the way, we evaluate our, our, our offerings in the elective program every year, uh, and we survey kids. So if something isn't drawing the interest of young men, we'll move it out and move something else in. That's how sports journalism got in. And that's why, by the way, our psychology class went to an AP psychology class for the next year. We value the input from the kids. But again, electives are in the senior year. Okay, next question. Do you provide summer classes? We, we do not. Uh, we do not have enrichment classes or, or summer school programs. Um, not something we offer at this time. 
Uh, we do have some, and Bill might be able to speak to this, uh, a lead on camp for our uh, rising, uh, our middle school students uh, that might be on the call. And we have something in the junior year for the SAT prep, ACT prep, and college boot camp. Uh, but that would be the only two opportunities right now in the summer at Bergen Catholic. And in most summers, we have a, a math boot camp that's available for incoming freshmen. Um, this year, obviously, we had to put that on hold because I don't think we'll be able to get any students on campus. But uh, typically, um, we we do offer a math boot camp for incoming freshmen and also um, current students who want a, a little algebra refresher as well. Another a great question. Any talk about opening up in eighth grade? <laughs> I'm aware of what's happening at a neighboring um, Catholic high school. It's not something uh, we, we have anything uh, right now to, to announce. Um, you know, we want to be a help to the diocese. Um, you know, unfortunately, nine Catholic elementary sc uh, schools closed or will be closing at the end of the school year. Um, so we want to be a help. Um, you know, so we offer ourselves uh, to the diocese on a regular basis. But no, we don't we do not have a plan for an eighth grade. Uh, we are high school nine through 12. I think the Leonard family, if there was a Bergen Catholic kindergarten, we would have taken advantage of that, but no eighth grade, no eighth grade in the foreseeable future. All right. Do we have any other questions? All right. I think that, um, I think that just about does it. So again, I want to thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Tim McElhinney again um, for uh, being an excellent resource. And um, even throughout your, your four years of Bergen Catholic, um, he will always be there to help your sons. Um, and he's happy to, uh, to be that resource throughout the four years. So um, our next coffee series is going to be tomorrow night again at seven o'clock. So we'd love for you to tune in. Um, and this will be recorded and sent out. Um, so if you ever need to take a look at it, it will be available. So thank you all so much for joining us. Um, and I hope everyone has a great night. Thank you very much, everyone.